Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about antiviral drugs. And um, well, one of the good things about these antiviral drugs is that most of these antiviral drugs have VIR, which kind of stands for virus, hidden somewhere in their names. So, good, you don't have to learn so much about it. Anyway, uh, the antiviral agents, most of these antiviral agents or drugs are actually anti-metabolite drugs. And these antimetabolites actually resemble uh, the structures of bases of purine and pyrimidine or their nucleoside forms. And uh, these antimetabolites are uh, the pro-drugs and they are actually activated by either host cell or viral enzymes. And these viral enzymes are usually kinases. As we all know, the function of kinases is actually the phosphorylation. They are actually the phosphorylation enzymes that cause the phosphorylation of the substrates. So this is uh, the general uh, theme that uh, all these, most of these antiviral agents follow. Okay, now we're gonna uh, s uh, tell uh, you about the summary of these mechanism of action of all these drugs. Uh, well, uh, the drugs that actually block the viral attachment and entry uh, onto the nuclear membrane, they are enfuvertide docosinol and palivizumab and it's good that you guys actually wrote learn this because this is very important the drugs that uh, block penetration they are alpha interferon the drugs that block uh, uncoating they're amantadine and romantadine the there are no drugs that actually block the early protein synthesis but there are a certain amount of uh, drugs that block the nucleic acid synthesis and they are nucleoside reverse transcript inhibitors. They are non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. They are acyclovir, uh, phoscarinate, and anticaver. And uh, well, there are some proteins, uh, some drugs that actually block late protein synthesis, and they are uh, protease inhibitors, obviously. And there are no drugs that actually block uh, the package and assembly of the viruses and there are definitely certain drugs that actually inhibit the viral release uh, from the host cell and they are your uh, famous neuraminidase inhibitors now we're going to specifically talk about anti uh, herpetic agents okay which are actually used against the herpes viruses the famous herpes viruses now one of the uh, ways by which you can actually learn uh, the common antiherpetic drugs is actually through the mnemonic which is ABCDEFG. So we have a drug uh, A cyclovir that stands with A, we don't have a drug that uh, stands uh, with B, we have a drug that stands with C that is Cedophobin, we don't have a drug that stands with uh, D, we don't have a drug that stands with E, we have a drug that stands with uh, F, which is phoscarinate, uh, and we have a drug that stands with that stands with against uh, G, and that is gencyclovir. So yeah, A cyclovir, pseudofovir, phoscarinate, gencyclovir, A B C D E F G, where you got B uh, D and E. I don't know. This is kind of weird, but I just I think it's like you know one of the stupid ways to learn. And uh, mm, very important to know is that they're actually effective only during the acute phase of infection. They have no effect on the latent phase. And uh, they all are purine and pyrimidine analogs that actually inhibit viral DNA synthesis except two drugs which are phoscarinate uh, and uh, fomiversin. And you can remember them by the word F. No, F word is not good. So, well, they just don't follow the rules. <laughs> First candid and uh, for me, uh, version, they are actually not purine and pyrimidine analogs that inhibit viral DNA synthesis. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about um, the general mechanism of action: uh, the acyclovir, pencyclovir, and dencyclovir. Okay. They are actually uh, activated to their monophosphate form by the virus. Uh, specified enzyme which is actually uh, thymidine kinase or uh, any kinase okay so uh, this a cyclovir pen cyclovir and gen cyclovir are converted to uh, monophosphate form by the virus specified enzymes then uh, monophosphate is actually converted into uh, triphosphate form and uh, cedophobin and phoscarinate they're actually uh, converted to 
triphosphate form by the host kinases only okay so uh, these pseudophobia and phosphate are not actually activated by virus specified enzymes and when all these drugs are actually uh, in their triphosphate form they actually cause the competitive inhibition of viral dna polymerase and obviously as a result there would be no dna replication we're going to talk about acyclovir uh, the acyclovir is actually a guanosine analog okay but it lacks true sugar moiety it is actually as you all know that uh, as already mentioned in the previous uh, slide that was converted into monophosphorylate by the herpes virus coded enzyme which is actually thymidine kinase um, and then it is converted into biphosphorylated and triphosphorylated enzyme by the host cell uh, kinases now this acyclovir triphosphate is actually uh, the active form of the drug which acts as a substrate and inhibitor of dna polymerase and uh, it acts as a substrate uh, because it actually competes with the deoxyguanosine triphosphate okay so for the dna polymerase binding now if this acyclovir triphosphate somehow uh, is incorporated into dna what really happens uh, there is actually premature chain termination okay why this uh, premature chain termination because it lacks the equivalent of ribosol uh, 3 hydroxyl group which your uh, de deoxyguanosine triphosphate has and why it doesn't have we already we have already said that acyclovir does not have sugar moiety so it cannot actually uh, prolong the dna chain okay Now resistance is usually due to uh, either changes in the viral DNA polymerase enzyme or there are some strains uh, in uh, actually some study says that there are actually 50% of the herpes strains that actually lack thymidine kinase. So obviously they would, be, they would have resistance against this drug. Pharmacokinetics of acyclovir is that uh, we can give uh, acyclovir through IV orally or through tropical administration. The distribution is well throughout the body, even in CSF. Uh, metabolism is that it is partially metabolized to inactive products. Excretion is mainly through kidneys by glomerular filtration and secretion. And uh, you should be really cautious in giving acyclovir in renally impaired patients. It has a very short half-life. That is why uh, usually you give multiple oral doses uh, daily. And this problem has been solved by the uh, formulation of a new form of acyclovir, which is actually the Easter form of acyclovir, which is called velacyclovir. And this has greater oral bioavailability than acyclovir. So now it is velacyclovir is commonly used. Uh, the clinical uses of acyclovir is that it is actually uh, active against herpes virus 1 and 2, varicella zoster, and some species of Epstein Barr virus. This is actually the treatment of choice in herpes encephalitis. This reduces viral shedding in genital herpes. This reduces symptoms if it is used uh, early in chicken pox. Okay? Uh, it decreases acute neuritis in shingles, all these uh, herpes. Uh, virus diseases, different so, uh, form of herpes virus diseases, and it is actually used in prophylaxis in immunocompromised patients. The side effects actually depend upon uh, the route of administration. Uh, in If you apply it, uh, the acyclovir topically, uh, you would just have local irritation. Um, Orally, if acyclovir is, has been given, so it is usually well tolerated, but uh, the patient may have GI distress or headache. Uh, IV form is actually kind of most uh, susceptible to side effects, and you have nephrotoxicity, you can have crystal urea, and in this patient, you should uh, continually hyd uh, continuously hydrate them. The patient can have a delirium, hypertension, seizures. Remember that this drug can actually go inside the brain. Well, this is actually the acyclovir. Just remember that it is available in the 200 and 400 milligram dose. Well, then we have gencyclovir. This is actually a guanine derivative. It is 
very similar to that of acyclovir. It is 8 to 20 times uh, has greater activity than acyclovir against cytomegalovirus. And in the book, Lippincott says that it is the only uh, cytomegalovirus is the only infection against which gencyclovir is actually approved. Why? Because it has a very uh, bad side effect uh, profile. Mechanism of action is similar to that of acyclovir except in cytomegalovirus. Uh, unlike uh, in herpes viruses, uh, they don't have thymidine kinase enzymes, but they have another kinase enzyme which is actually phosphotransferase UL97. And resistance is also similar to that of acyclovir. Pharmacokinetics says that it is usually given uh, as IV intravenous mostly and uh, intraocular form is given in uh, cytomegalovirus retinitis patients. Oral uh, biobility is less than 10%. Uh, distribution is well throughout the body including CSF and I. Excretion is through the kidneys but glomerular filtration tubular secretion uh, excretion is through kidneys through glomerular filtration tubular secretion. Uh, renal animation is actually directly proportional to the creatinine clearance and just like uh, we had uh, the easter form of Acyclovir, we have the easter form of gancyclovir, which is well gancyclovir and has greater oral bioavailability than uh, gancyclovir and has reduced the use of intravenous gancyclovir, intravenous phoscanid, and intravenous xenophobia. And clinical uses that is used as prophylaxis and treatment of CMV retinitis and other CMV infections in immunocompromised patients. And yeah, here comes the bad effects of again cyclovir and the reason why, although it can be used in herpes by uh, herpes one and two, but it is not used because it has a very bad side effect profile. Well, it causes dose limiting hematotoxicity, which includes neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia. It causes fever, mucositis, uh, rash, hepatic dysfunction, seizures, and experimental animals. Uh, it is. Uh, Thought that it also causes cars uh, it is actually carcinogenic, uh, teratogenic, embryotoxic, and it causes severe neutropenia if it is actually used with drugs like uh, zerobutene, azathioprine, and other myelosuppressive drugs.